Welcome to the Digging Deeper Podcast, brought to you by New Hope Church. My name is Matt, and I'm so very excited to dive into today's topic. Before we get there, though, let's go around the room and see how everybody's doing. Nate, how you doing, man? Good to be back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm good. I'm yeah. good. Yeah, I had a week or so, a week or two of vacation, and mm-hmm. uh, just been ridiculously busy with yeah. a lot of stuff for our, our build and our financing and all that, uh, but feeling just so blessed, man. I think... The way PT started our staff meeting today was exactly how I've been feeling. Um, just like, wow, we get to work together. Yeah, truth. what an amazing team that only God could assemble. What amazing church and volunteers! Like, there's lots of opportunity to be divisive, and our church is just so encouraging and uh, united. And this is a season as a pastor. I'll never, I don't want to ever forget. You right? know, like yeah. this is insane and uh, yeah, such a blessing. And yeah, really feeling encouraged by that. Family wise, it's. So good to take vacation with the kids, <laughs> yeah. and the pool's warm, <laughs> yeah. and we're it's it's so nice. So awesome. yeah, we're the kids are awesome, and mm-hmm. everyone's good, man. Thanks for asking. No, absolutely. And Toby, how you doing, buddy? Matt, uh, very good, so buddy. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, similar to Nate, also had uh, two weeks mm-hmm. of vacay, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, we decided to refinish our kitchen. Yes. You know, so it was a working vacation. Yep. But yeah, I love doing it and love doing DIY stuff. So that was fun. Mm-hmm. And we did some Toronto trips and yeah, it was good. Um, and I think, yeah, being back on Sunday, like missing two weeks and coming straight back to a baptism Sunday. Oh, yeah. Just like, man, this is incredible. Yeah, so yeah, good yeah, to be so back good. and just do, you know, this is why we do what we do. Yeah, and you got it. It was just so encouraging to hear yeah. such powerful testimony. On the first Sunday back. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. so that was awesome. Especially oh. leading into baptism, right? Yeah. In, or, uh, sorry, day camp. And yeah. then she's going, oh, yes. because of Lego day camp, you're like, oh, like we could yeah. write this yeah. up. Like, this <laughs> is all good. <laughs> I didn't tell her to say that. She, she said it. Like, 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 this wow. up. Yeah, so that's good. awesome. Yeah. How are you doing, Matt? I'm doing, I'm doing really well. Um, yeah, I know things are going really well. Like I said, getting ready for day camp and summer fest. And we're actually taking our vacation on the other side of that, which we're really Ever. excited about. Um, yeah. Uh, well, it worked out just because we get to ship the kids off to the grandparents. So uh. we just, we're not even going anywhere. We're just locking the doors and turn the phones off and just nice. taking, taking the week uh, for ourselves. So it's, we're looking forward to that a lot, but, uh, but no, things are great. I, I've, I've been so encouraged even just having the interns here and just their enthusiasm mm. and their excitement to learn. Yeah. Um, I, I love that that enthusiasm of I want to learn things. Yeah. Um, and so it's been really encouraging even every week. I've really appreciated our, uh, our staff meetings. Cause we take like the first 10 minutes and just pour into yeah, our interns great. and that that's my heartbeat is to raise up young leaders that are, that are going to just lead the charge when we're dead and gone. So, awesome. uh, so that's I'm going to live forever. Uh, sorry. <laughs> live forever. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so things are great. But uh, I want to dive into PT's uh, yeah. sermon. Uh, so many great pieces in there. And just uh, what I really appreciated this last Sunday was was the masterful way of which he dissected, I think, a lie that culture believes about church. And it's this idea that that Christianity is exclusive. Like it's this closed in, closed box, you you know. Um, and and that comes down to actually not understanding what inclusive and exclusive is, which I want to get you guys to kind of speak into a little bit. But but I guess we'll we'll kind of start with this question: of Why do you think that uh, there is a cultural perspective that Christianity is a very exclusive religion? Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Maybe need to start us in on that, buddy. Yeah, sure. The first time I ever heard anyone speak on this was Tim Keller, and uh, he you know he's got it inner city new york church so you could imagine you know <laughs> the pressure on the christian church there yeah. and you know for him to hold his uh, you know biblical perspective one of the things he said is people are looking for um when when they talk about inclusivity they're talking about an affirmation um so by being inclusive you're affirming people yeah. and that's not actually what inclusivity is um but that's how the culture our culture i would maybe argue it is seeing inclusivity inclusivity is a encouragement and affirmation of how you who you are, how you're acting, what your behaviors are. Yeah. I affirm that. I encourage that. I'm inclusive. Mm-hmm. As soon as I might disagree with that, it's exclusive. Yeah. Uh, as soon as I might even just hold a different viewpoint, not even think it's wrong or a sin, just a different viewpoint, just mm-hmm. a question why we're doing that, that becomes now exclusive. It's, it's not inclusive anymore. So inclusivity in our culture, I think, summed up as affirmation of behavior almost. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I think I've uh, I had a friend that was like a 
hardcore atheist Mm -hmm. and uh, we would have this conversation and i think the thing that some people get get hooked on as they go you're telling me i can only go to heaven through jesus yeah and we go yeah yes right and then they go well that's very that's excluding everybody we go no it's actually the opposite (laughs) like anybody can come (laughs) to heaven can follow jesus you just Mm -hmm. go Mm -hmm. yes jesus i'm ready i'm gonna follow you i'm gonna surrender my life and i think there's some confusion around that topic in the world you know yeah yeah like i said yeah absolutely Uh, so to to piggyback on that because i think i think you've just nailed what the cultural definition of inclusivity is um by contrast what is actually probably a better and you've you've alluded to this a little bit nate but if you guys just can flesh this out a little bit what is actually a better definition of this idea of inclusive you know versus exclusive um you know based on our understanding of, of scripture and and what god's called us to before I answer yeah, please, that, please do. <laughs> let me suggest that um, within our our uh, the way we think, mm. because we aren't God, we yeah. love rules and in in order and lists and do's and don'ts. Yeah, we we love that. That's how we want to operate, uh, mm-hmm. and we live in it. That's the kind of societal context we live in: a culture of rules and laws. So it's not just Western world, and it's not just Christianity that fall prey to this inc- version of inclusivity. So, you know, PT mentioned on Sunday, the, our, our, our brothers in India, like mm-hmm. Joshua will be the first one to tell you that the caste system is the most exclusive system yeah, that right. we have in our world. So it's not Christianity, you mm-hmm. know, and, and yet it's not only, so it's not just one religion and it's not just one way of life. It's, it's almost like the, the new, you know, I think some people like peg and pick on Christianity right away yeah. um, because they see religion as rule following and rule following means do good. And if you're not good, you're out. So that's yeah. not inclusive. Yeah. And this isn't what we're talking about. We're talking about a relationship with God. Mm-hmm. Like we're not talking about rule following. Thank God mm. that's not our job to get everyone to follow right. rules. We just want them to know Jesus. And when he'll sort that stuff out, yeah. you know, that's what the Holy Spirit does in us. So, um, so that's the first thing is this list of rules, I think, is what causes this misconception of the definition that we're talking about. Yeah. Um, if that makes sense. And, and I just want to make sure it's broader than just yeah. Niagara Christians, you know, or, yeah, or, 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 or Western you know, Christians. I think it's just way broader than that in terms of the exclusivity of other religions yep. out there as well. Sorry, that no, wasn't a good question, but that no, was that's a good piece. Yeah, I yeah. forgot the question. <laughs> Me too, and I wrote it. Okay, so you're cool. doing great. Uh, it's not just me. No, it's just this idea of giving kind of a clear understanding of what it means to be inclusive uh, and exclusive. Uh, yes. So go ahead, so, Nate. So I think a clear <laughs> understanding is the actual definition, which is mm-hmm. to allow people to be included. Like no mm-hmm. matter where you're at, you're included. Yeah. You're, you get to be included. And uh, our wording at New Hope is a safe place to know, love, and serve Jesus. You're included here, no matter where you're at, to know, love, and serve Jesus. No matter what you believe, no matter what your doubts are, no matter where mm-hmm. you're at, you are welcome here. And our goal is to help you know, love, and serve Jesus. And so you you can be poor or rich. Or actually, I love where we are in Western Hill, to be honest, because yeah. the socioeconomic demographic one kilometer away is you know town housing, and one kilometer away is two million dollar housing. So yeah. I just love the fact that we're a collection of people nations whatever that mm-hmm. are here just going this is your safe place yeah. and that's what inclusive means exclusive means there's something that excludes you so what is it what excludes mm. you from the community of faith and um you know there, there, there that's we we call that excommunication yep. in the church right. world and uh in previous churches uh, in, in society you know you get divorced you're excommunicated mm-hmm. you know like you can't be in this church that way your your kids are sinning willy like willingly sinning you can't be an elder you're excommunicated from that position so those are where the church has often been seen i think culturally a bit more exclusive yeah. where now you're not dutch you're not welcome you know or whatever yeah, right yeah, like, yeah. because like you know there are churches that are very even where pastor jay was before are very uh mm-hmm. cultural and so we as a church, I know we'll get to this, but we work hard to try to figure out, well, let's not, you know, tag ourselves on the exclusive things that push people, but it include people on that. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I don't no, know no, if that no, makes sense. No, no, that's good. Well, let's, let's dig into that a little bit. Maybe I'll we'll get you speaking to this as well. What yeah. are some of the ways that we at New Hope try to create that, you know, we use the terminology of a safe space mm-hmm. or an inclusive space where people can get to know, love, and serve Jesus. What's that look like for us on the daily? Yeah, I think... Just to go back to what you were saying too, Nate, like the exclusive immediately go, it's only for a select few. Mm-hmm. Like only a select few can feel safe. Yeah. That's Where right. we go, no, it's inclusive. Jesus came for 
everybody. Yeah. Everybody can be included mm-hmm. and have a relationship with God. Um, yeah, and I think on on we try to communicate your new hope that everybody is welcome. Mm-hmm. Like Nathan just said, like no matter what you believe, come and we would love to introduce you to Jesus, maybe. Yep. And you know, you yeah, the race will kind of just fall into place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Nate, what are your what are your thoughts on this? <laughs> <laughs> we so when we designed the building, mm-hmm. we designed the building to not look like a typical church. It's true, just so that people whose backs would get up because they go, "I'll never walk into church. I'll light on fire." Mm. Would maybe enter the doors and okay. go, "Huh?" And they walk in, and it looks like a mm-hmm. like a modern kind of industrial building. And they it's go, a "Warehouse." Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> and there's a fireplace outside with a hidden cross message in it, <laughs> That's right. and they go, "Huh." So I go every, literally everything from the the property yeah. to our the, the like the coffee that we serve, mm-hmm. which is free. The supports missions if you want to give like yeah. it, but it's like ama- great coffee, a, a, a great worship service, like amazing connect team, um, parking spots with signs that say this is for Sunday morning guests and moms. Like like to try to figure out what would be the thing that would make you feel like you were expected here. Yeah, yeah. Like we couldn't wait for you to get here. So. Those would be some of the things I I think culturally at New Hope this has been something that we've done very well is to meet people right away to go mm-hmm. out of our way to greet people because uh, even PT said on Sunday when we did the the name tags he goes like this might be a little awkward give it a pass if it's awkward for you but yeah. like if we want want to be a community we want to care for people is yeah it, you want to know each other's names absolutely yeah. like yeah. I can call you Bud yeah that's right <laughs> but I'd rather call you Matt so. yeah, that's right sure. <laughs> yeah and I mean like also like any kind of event we host or put on like mm-hmm. uh, day camp that's coming up yeah of course our kids are welcome yeah but the main aim for that is let's get the kids that aren't in New Hope get them all included mm-hmm. into this or if we do summer fest or nat fest whatever it might be yeah the language from from the stage will always be invite your friends and family people mm-hmm. that aren't included yet invite them and get them involved and included yeah yeah no, I, I would agree. I think one of the things I hear so frequently from new people I meet with, um, you know, and, it, and it's always fun because I usually get to meet people once you guys have already connected with them at least once. Now they're looking to get plugged in in different places. And and I, there's always this consistent theme of feeling welcome mm-hmm. and feeling safe mm-hmm. and feeling like I can just be here. Um, and I think that speaks volumes about the type of space we're creating, both physically and even in the right. way we interact with people. And And that is, you know, that I think is a testament to the heartbeat of New Hope. As as we know, we want people to walk in and go, yeah, I you know I'm I don't like church, but I like this. Mm. Um, you know, and literally know that this is what the church should look like. You know, of uh, of engaging and opening up to people. Um, and, and that's yeah. something else. As you as you're mentioning that, there's something else that uh, I think is maybe somewhat unique to how we function as a church family is we invite everyone to serve right away. Yeah. Yes. So there's no. There's no um, holiness test, yep, although right. we are writing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if we keep if you're listening, it you're, yeah, if you're listening, once we pass it, we'll pass it on to you. It's on draft. Uh, <laughs> That's right. No, but uh, surely, like our administrator, mm-hmm. I, I love her testimony because the first Sunday at the church, yeah, so they were carrying a coffee pot, and mm-hmm. she, someone said, w- w- "Are you okay if you help with the coffee pot? Like, can you carry it for me?" And she goes, of course. And Shirley has led our hospitality team since that's, I think three months after that. That's right. That's for right. the last fifteen years. You know, yeah. like, so I, I just feel a little bit like people have are wondering, do I have anything to offer? Mm-hmm. Do am I am I actually gifted? Am I valued? Yeah. Would I have any value in this community? And so serving is actually one of those ways that you <laughs> include people with their yes. gifts, their talents, and their abilities. Which the Rotary Club does, which community care and other areas are going to do great jobs. But the church needs to do this. They yeah. need to understand and identify people's God-given gifts and be able to fan them into flame and see them mm-hmm. grow here. So I think New Hope, as much as I think churches get scared to ask to serve because it sounds like you're demanding something from people. Yeah. But as Jordan Peterson said last week, ask more. Yeah. Yeah. People need That's a higher right. calling, not a lower calling. You got so it. call them to more. And I, yeah. I think New Hope has done a great job at that. Yeah. yeah, one more thing I'll add is I also think the the language we use and the way everybody preaches, mm-hmm. we don't have this like, I've now made it, I'm holy, <laughs> right, yeah. I know what's going on. Like mm-hmm. a lot of time our language will be, I struggle with this, this is something, or we'll tell a story out of this is what I'm going through in my marriage or whatever mm-hmm. it might be. And I think that immediately makes people feel included because you yeah. can relate with that. You go, yeah, me too. That's my struggle. Mm-hmm. Instead of trying to talk down to people because we 
what's the point? We all are in yeah. the same boat, going through the same you struggles, with the struggle with the same sin, mm-hmm. and Jesus is the only answer. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, yeah, there's that that old saying that you know when you're pointing one finger at someone, you're pointing three at yourself, yeah. and and it's true. <laughs> um, you know, there is there is there is this beauty when we all are just very honest and uh, in honest in our need for a savior, yeah. um, which creates an inclusive space, right? It flattens that hill right. uh, that everybody thinks they need to climb on. Yeah. Like we mentioned, I think in almost every ser- sermon, how we're all level at the foot of the cross. Yeah, that's right. Like yeah. we're, yeah. I think P- like, I, I know we do it, but PT does a great job as well. Mm-hmm. Like this uh, last Sunday, he just confessed how he sucks at doing the, yeah, like there's yeah. a confession on stage almost every Sunday yeah. Yeah. and um, of, of you know, climbing off of the pedestal. So yeah, that's, that's it. That's right. Really good. When we do that, it allows others to go like, oh, okay, so I'm not alone. That's yeah, that's it. right. I think the other area is sharing testimonies. Mm-hmm. I know it's courageous. I know it's fearful. I know everybody that gets baptized hates doing it and they're scared, you yeah. know, they're scared to do it. Mm-hmm. And yet I think it creates an environment where other people go, okay, so they're yeah. welcome here. I'm welcome here. You got it. So yeah. that, that sin, okay. And they're still mm. forgiven and loved here. I could be forgiven and loved here. So it mm. creates a culture of realizing like, wow, we're, we can all be included. Same calling people to run the church to pray, uh, sing over people. Yeah. The whole church is welcome. Yeah. You don't have to be holier than the, anything. That's Come right, that's pray right, over yeah. them. Let's yeah. sing. We're yeah. part of the family. So yeah. right. it's good. Yeah. That's right. On that testimony thing, I just need to I need to say that, you know, I'm thankful for the testimonies. Like if it hadn't been for even Zoe's testimony on Sunday. And just that that speaking into how, you know, being around the, the community of Christ has impacted her little life mm-hmm. already. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Uh, man, talk about just yeah, There's my wife who's, you know, right. struck, you know lost lost her fathers. Yeah. And there's this little girl speaking yeah. such truth about mm-hmm. a heavenly father that mm-hmm. won't leave you or forsake you, right? Like, right. That's profound. Oh, her, that's that she's gonna, that I had to process and already, and will have to process, but she oh. knows the truth now. Like, yeah. Oh, so, man. yeah, anyway, I was just, that one really, yeah. really shook me in a good way on Sunday. But, yeah, that's great. Uh, I want to come back to uh, this idea of inclusive and Nada, you did such a good job earlier describing, you know, the cultural concept of inclusivity, which is of affirmation and acceptance of whatever it is. Um, and PT pushed against that on Sunday. And, and I want to unpack that a little bit because, uh, you know, he, he, he quote, I, I quoted him on this. He threw out that this question, you know, kind of ironically he said, shouldn't we just love people with no agenda? Just love people. And then he went on to, you know, kind of unpack that that is a terrible idea um, to just love without an agenda. Mm. Um, you know, f- maybe give some context to that a little bit if you can. But sure. then the question is, why is that actually just a terrible idea? Uh, yeah, go ahead there, Nate. Dive into that, buddy. Yeah, sure. Um, context. I, I. So your first question was context and why it's terrible. But mm. I would say um, his other line that followed this up that I think is helpful in this that says uh, – you have an agenda for every relationship you're in yes. already. Yeah. And you just said, no matter what, like be real with it. You have mm-hmm. an agenda. And usually, unfortunately, most of our agendas in any relationship are selfish. Yeah. And self-seeking. And so when, for us, I think he said it was a, we, often our agenda, even if it is a loving looking thing, it's some weird form of self-affirmation. Like it's still mangled in there is a weird agenda. Yeah. So loving people with no agenda. I, I mean, I dated uh, my wife. Mm-hmm. Before I married her, which is probably Smart. a good idea. Smart to yep. do. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I think yep. you got the right strategy. Order. When I did that, <laughs> it well. when I did that, I made lots of plans. Mm. I figured out what she would like. I ordered the right flowers. I took her to the right places. I planned the amazing birthdays with the scavenger hunts. Like, and guess what? I still have to do all those things. <laughs> right. It's not like one day mm. dates just kind of started happening and scavenger hunts were just planned for us. Like. That's right. I have to plan for these things because mm-hmm. it matters mm-hmm. and it matters to love her well. And so I make, I, I actually spend time thinking, how can I love this person? That's called an agenda. Yes. I don't know. That sounds, you know, <laughs> it's crazy. maybe a different word. <laughs> right. Plans, yeah. agenda, it's all the same thing. And so mm-hmm. uh, to love someone well, because you were so selfish by nature and we look inward so much requires us to do some work and to yeah. think outside of ourselves and actually humble ourselves and go, okay, what does that look like? What's the agenda? What's the plan? For me to actually love well. And so to pretend that we can just inherently love, I go, man, I am inherently selfish. Mm -hmm. Like my default is not to pour out more. My default is to look inward. Yeah. And I think I think if we're all honest, we would agree with that. And so that's the issue. That's the context behind that. If that answers that. Yeah, no, it didn't. Yeah. So Yeah, I think loving someone without an agenda is extremely fake. Mm Mm-hmm. And I think the per- anybody can pick up on it. Yeah. I think the the language of love has become so cheap 
in mm. our society. Oh, yeah. I love this ice cream or I love my iPhone or whatever it <laughs> might right. be. It's become so easy for people just to throw around the word I love you or love mm-hmm. you, buddy. Whatever it might be, it's become cheap. Mm-hmm. It doesn't carry weight. People don't actually think before they say it. And we can pick up on that. Yeah. Um, I, I always use the example of your young child going over to the stove and going, no, don't touch the stove. And she's going to go, oh. I'm going to touch the stove. <laughs> That's right. And no, I love you, honey. Don't touch the stove. She's still going to touch the stove, mm-hmm. but at some hand, you might going to have to smack her hand. Mm-hmm. Not because you are out to smack the kid, yeah. because you love her and you don't want her to get burnt. Yeah. Right. And I think that's that's sometimes the element that goes missing is we, we throw out the baby with the bath water going, yep. it's just pure love. There's yeah. no, everything's just affirming, like you were saying, Nate. Mm-hmm. Like we just have to go, everything is fine. We just love everything about you. Yeah. And that's actually incorrect jesus never just said yes just come do whatever you want yeah almost every single time jesus had an encounter with somebody he said now go and sin no more yeah they were always like this is the next step don't just remain the same mm-hmm. yeah yeah so so to unpack that a little further you know and, and so you've already started to kind of lean into this so i just want to keep going with it a little bit but why does love actually compel us to have an agenda for people and uh, you know w- w- like, why are we driven? Like, why you've answered the kind of the why we don't not have an agenda, but mm-hmm. why is it actually, why does love actually compel us to that? Yeah, I think it's the same thing. And like what you were saying too, Nathan, with dating, like there's this drive now. Mm-hmm. Now I've got a, a friend that I want to, I don't want to see this friend go to hell. I want this friend yeah. to find Jesus because I love him. I don't mm-hmm. want to see him get hurt. Same with the, the child touching the stovetop or whatever it might be. Yeah, For me, that's it. I go, I, I want to, I want to save you from a lot of pain. I want I want the best for you. Yeah. That's kind of what love for me in, in essence means. Loving somebody I want the best for you. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Nate, what are your thoughts? Yeah, it's it says in the book of John that we are supposed to abide in God's love, eh? And mm. uh and out of that flows love for others. And um I mean, it's as a Christian for as many years as I've been, that's so true. The less I abide in his love, the less I'm good at loving. The less of his Holy Spirit to me, the less patient, kind, gentle, you know, self-controlled I am. And so mm. the more we need uh, his love uh, you know, the, the, and recognize our weakness, as Paul yeah. said, like uh, our strength is made clear my weakness. Like, yeah. You know, the more we realize his love is what it needs to propel us. So <clears throat> why that happens, I think, is we— we need to a humble ourselves and we'll love better. So you humble yourself before the Lord and realize mm-hmm. your brokenness and repent. You'll love better. Yeah. It'll bring you down to other people's level instead of putting yourself on a pedestal and judging them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's some practical ways that that'll work, but it'll also remember, remind you how much you were loved. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And out of a place of being forgiven, of being able, like in this, our song incense to lo- stand face to face with God. Mm. Yeah. Like wh- why, what? Me, horrible sinner, walk back up the driveway and he mm-hmm. runs out to meet me? Like, that doesn't, throws me a feast. This doesn't make sense. Like, I've rejected him. And so how is that? And now, just even as I speak those words, now you go, are you ready to love somebody different? Yeah. For sure you are. Yeah. yeah. For sure you are. But typically our love is, it, as PT said, is going to be out of a place of self-seeking, self-whatever. You know, I gave because it felt good, and, mm-hmm. you know, and, and mm-hmm. then it gets all distorted and twisted and weird. But if we're able to sit humble in that moment, uh, just, you know, love God and love people or whatever, I go, yeah, yeah that order is not wrong. Yeah, that's right. That's Spend right. that time loving God and yeah. you, you will, if yeah. you have his heart, you will love people. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think, you know, maybe the 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 wording should just be like spent you know if you haven't spent that time with God don't even bother trying to love these people <laughs> right. like like maybe just hold up a sec go yeah, go yeah. back to the garden and yeah. spend that time with mm-hmm. God first because mm-hmm. you'll be way more able to do it and uh, yeah. and and your motives will be will be clear so yeah it's true if you experience has taught me that if you try to love without Christ uh, feeling that you you'll run out pretty quick. Uh, you you burn out fast, and you you actually become very bitter towards people. And that's the uh, bridge between these two mm-hmm. conversations. So you have it, you're talking about including people yeah. or excluding people. Mm-hmm. And so when we say Christianity is like one that is the most inclusive way, like everyone can, it, he came for the whole world that they yeah. all might have a way. Yeah, because that's the Father so loved the world. 
that's why he was motivated to do that. Mm-hmm. And so for us to go, the, the inclusive way of Christ was motivated by love. And so the inclusive way of the church should be motivated by love for the lost, yeah. for the f- disciples, for the people broken in our midst, the people celebrating, the people mourning. Mm-hmm. Everything about being inclusive as a church is motivated by the love of the Father. Uh, that was first for us and is now you know for the world. And we get to do that together. And that's... Like what a high and holy calling, yeah, uh, sacred privilege, and often daunting task. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, I think they yeah. all kind of go in one at some yeah, point. Absolutely, yeah. Which, which again, just reinforces that need to love God first, right? It, it circles back to like we're not going to be able to do this well unless we are firmly planted in the love of of Christ in our own lives. Yeah, because uh, that's talk about being inclusive. Yeah, like we're welcome to come to the table. Yeah despite what we've done Which and we could be the older brother yeah. when other people get invited to the table mm-hmm. and say, sorry, I'm going to pull back because you're being included. I don't agree with yeah. it. Yeah. Or we can go, no, no, no. The most inclusive thing to do is feast together. That's right. With the father. That's right. Guys, thank you so much for joining the podcast today. So great to have both of you back. Uh, it's the only problem with summer is everybody is all spaced you out. Three months. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so it's so good to have everybody here. Uh, and to our listeners, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, if this is the first time listening to the podcast or if you're new, we just encourage you to jump on the app or the website, fill out the Connect card, because we would love, 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 love to connect with you. And we'll talk to you next time on Digging Deeper.